package. Now we don't have any data in here, and what we can easily do is create that, and if I hit Create New, I will get the yellow screen of death, but that's okay. It's because I don't have a Create View yet. Come back in here, I only have a single view. Well, that's easy to do, and you probably have guessed already that I'm going to use the tooling to create this for me. Add View, yes, it's going to be called Create. Yes, I'm going to use nerddinner.model.dinner, and this is going to use the Create content. That's pretty cool, huh? And so, before I show you this page, there's two things I want to do. I want to remove the dinner ID, because this is the primary key. I certainly do not want to be adding that manually, because the database controls that for me. What I do want to do is I want to set up some data uh, code or data access code inside the postback to add the dinner into the database. Now I could go with the way the template has created this for me. However, what I think I want to do is I want to leverage something really groovy uh, about ASP.NET MVC, and it's a thing called model binders. And what model binders simply do is they look at your model, in this case my link to SQL stuff, my classes, my dinner, RSVP, and so on, and it tries to see if it can bind uh, the request uh, to your object, which is pretty groovy. So I could just take the form collection here, and the form collection is a bunch of name value uh, pairs of information. I could use that if I wanted to, but I don't. I want it to do everything for me. So I will come in here, hit control dot, add a using statement to the page. And so now what's going to happen is ASP.NET MVC is going to see that this action requires this argument and it's going to say well alright let's see if I can create this object and it will be able to and now let's see if I can bind it and it will also do that so how do we know if it's bound correctly what if there's a mistake what if someone entered some bad information uh, in the form well will it still be bound will the whole thing explode and the answer is no it's very exciting so what we can do is we can test for this we can ask ASP.NET well how is that model state is it valid? And if it's valid, we can go ahead and do our data input stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this try catch block up here, and we're good to go with that. Well, all right, what if it isn't valid? What are we going to do then? Well, the good thing is, is that when the model binders try and bind some information uh, and it fails, it'll just keep going. So it fails gracefully, as they say, and what's going to happen is it's going the model state is going to capture those errors. And so, what we're going to do is just return the object, partially bound, but down to the view. And that's going to happen on failure if our data access code doesn't work out right. And what we should also do is add it if it's not bound correct. Okay, well now what we need to do is quite simply just create a new data context. We need to add, insert on submit, the dinner, and then finally probably submit the changes. And that's all we need to do. Now we have some nice data access. And so what's going to happen here is I'm going to run the application by hitting F5. And it's going to pop up. And I'm going to type in manually up here, dinner. And now I can hit Create New. You can see now we have a nice form. So what I'll do is add some information in here and show you how it gets added to the database. All right, I spared you from all my typing. Uh, here's our Create form. And we have some test information in here. So now when I hit Create, there we go. Bam. It's put in there. That's pretty easy stuff. Uh, if I hit edit, of course, it's going to break. Uh, but let's take a look at something here. If I hit another uh, create new, and if I come in here, let's just say I type in this information, which is always fun to see ASD, ASD, ASD. There's three things that are going to go wrong here. Number one, this is expecting a date. ASD is not a date. This is expecting a decimal, I believe, or a float, one of the two. And so is this. Actually, it's a double. So if I hit create, this is failing gracefully, which is awesome. Now notice if I come back in here into my controller, again, I didn't do, I didn't do anything to have this happen. I don't, all I've got is pure data access code in here, which I'm going to change in a little bit, by the way. Uh, but MVC helps us to fail gracefully, which is great. And so what we, what we have here is just an asterisk. just says, hey, there's errors. Go fix those. Well, if we want to do something a little bit more graceful, we can. So down here we have this thing called the HTML helper. This is sort of hooked in to the whole MVC runtime goodness. And I'll talk more about that uh, a little bit later as we go and we work with uh, the HTML stuff. But for right now, know that you can output this thing called a validation summary, and it outputs a message, as you can see right here. Well, down here, if we don't like the way the date looks, uh, we can type in a better message like incorrect date, and so on. And so also, let's, let's just fix up the latitude and longitude while we're here. 
And this should be something like, and we could say 38.000. And we want to copy this as well and say this should be something like, hmm, let's say negative 152.999. Great. So now what we can do is we can allow this thing to fail gracefully. Now what I can do is head over to dinner one more time. Great. And create new and I'll fill it full of ASD, ASD again. And I'll just stop right there and we hit that. Well, that's pretty cool. So it's going to tell us a couple things actually. Uh, value is required. It caught that it was empty. That's pretty handy. Uh, but in here we also uh, have an incorrect date. Okay, well there's lots more we can do with this, uh, including using data annotations, which I'll show you in a little while. For now, let's continue on. Let's build out our edit form. There's a couple more things I want to show you in here. So I'm going to pin this thing back open, head back over to the dinner controller, and let's create uh, the edit form so we can edit the data. And this, once again, is as simple as coming in here and getting our dinner from the database. There we go. And we're going to return a single dinner down here. All right, well, I'm going to repeat this code down here, and yes, I will be fixing this in a little bit. Now, what I want to show you is I do want to do the same thing down here. I want to create the data access code. At the same time, I'm creating uh, this uh, edit view up here, because this is going to be the thing that handles the post back. So notice what I'm doing here. I have to pull the dinner out of the database. This is how I need to work with Link to SQL, because as I mentioned before, Link to SQL is going to keep track of all the changes to this object, and then we'll make a transactional call to update those changes. So what I need to do now is I need to do something a little bit different than I did with this post back up here, which accepted a dinner. Because if that happens, well, what Link to SQL is going to do, if I put dinner in here, what Link to SQL is going to do is it's going to create or it's going to instantiate a new dinner, and whenever I try and work with that dinner with a new data context, I'm going to get an error. So what I'm going to do instead is something that's super cool, is I can use the model binders anyway. I can say, hey, update this model, and I'm going to pass in the dinner, and then I am going to set this form collection that's passed in to a value provider. Now this is a little funky kind of uh, wording. What a value provider is is sort of a abstraction of the f of a form collection. It could also be a query collection. It could be anything. Uh, just think of it as a name value pairing of a dictionary. And you can see it's even based on iDictionary right here. So I'm just basically passing in the form uh, form uh, collection here and saying bind it, which is kind of groovy if you think about it. It means you can use the update model with any sort of iDictionary. Okay, enough of that. And that's going to change our dinner for us, and then we need to just simply submit the changes. Okay, well, what happens if this thing fails? Well, again, we're going to pass this back down like that. Okay, and before we launch this thing, one last thing I want to do is I, of course, have to create the form. So I'm going to hit Add View, Edit, again, Dinner. Make sure I set Edit down here as my content. Hit Add. Great, and this thing pops up. Uh, again, I'm going to have to fix this right here because I do not want to edit my dinner, and I will take out the validation thing. Now you might be wondering, what is this model thing? We haven't really talked about this, Rob. You're kind of glancing over that. That's true. Well, let's dive into this a little bit deeper. If we come back here to the top of the page, what we're working on here is a view page. And it's worth noting right now that you don't need to work with this exact view page. In fact, you can have your own view engine if you like to decorate your views using something other than this syntax right here. And a lot of people do not like these gator tags, as they're called. They say they look like spaghetti code, and that's fine. If you don't like that, there's all kinds of other view engines out there like Spark and Hamel and so on. This 